Hi guys, yesterday I was flying uh, my uh, APM 2.6 uh, quadcopter. You can see, uh, you can check the um, videos that um, I'm putting on uh, about yesterday's flight. Yeah, I think you will really enjoy them actually. So anyway, <coughs> I'm, I'm going, going now to download um, some log data to see um, yeah, some variables, altitude I I was reaching consumption of uh, current consumption and other parameters that uh, the APM saves. So I have connected via um, USB my APM, my flight controller here. So now I can download download the data to the uh, ground station, the mission planner. So. Let's first go to um, terminal and download uh, the locks. So first of all, one has to connect and open the port of the IPM. And when this is done, you see now it's um, click on lock download. So the window that opens, it's listing. All the locks that are currently saved uh, from previous flights in APM, they call them here, yeah, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, so I'm going to download the all. Um, what I recommend and what I realize that it's uh, wise to do is uh, after you download the locks, of course you try to name you. It's good to name the files um, so that you know uh, where they, uh, um, which day or flights belong to but also to clear the logs of the APM here with this button here so that it doesn't happen like I have now I have, I'm not sure if all are from yesterday's flights only or I, I accumulated um, some, some, some logs from previous flights, previous days so anyway that's up to you of course um, but that's what I'm gonna do so I'm going to download, download in this case all logs here and then it starts dumping the data so you can see here that is reading the data and when this is uh, done in what it says now reading it will say uh, done okay <clears throat> we have uh, already downloaded the logs and now it's time to to check them so essentially we just need now to click on log browse here so the where you can see the log files. This is the um, folder in the computer where all the logs are saved. I recommend you to have a shortcut or um, um, in the desktop or to be able to access the the, the folder via via Explorer because uh, when you download logs from APM it downloads uh, download uh, other files not just those there are other files like uh, Google Earth files that I'm gonna show in a minute uh, what we can do with them which are very interesting to to play with as well so but so far uh, let's check now the the pure log files which is a quantitative, quantitative data of the sensors and calculations GPS and so on that the APM does so I'm gonna check, for example, the one of the yesterday's flights, the one at 12:37. So double click. So another window opens. We maximize, and then here we can see a bunch of data. You can see in the Arducopter website uh, more on this, which I will put the link actually where all this uh, table uh, is explained and so on. But what I'm gonna just show quickly now is uh, a bit how it works to for a very uh, quick uh, quick tip uh, star guide let, let's say so we have here variables uh, grouped by uh, by topics so attitude uh, this attitude tuning camera related variables blah, blah blah okay something some names are not very obvious what they they mean and others more obvious like current so you can see here for example ticking in the variable you want to plot you can see here the current consumption during this flight uh, then 
let's you can um, um, yeah let's untick now let's go to what I wanted to to show right now because it's related to Google Earth which is the the, the flight altitude I got and then in Google Earth I will show a 3d path of the flight so we go down 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 to GPS and then here you can see interesting data like the status you can play with it. Uh, it's the DOP. This is horizontal uh, dilution uh, position. This essentially tells uh, uh, how accurate is the the positioning uh, that the GPS gives, uh, given a certain uh, um, set of parameters, which are essentially uh, they are driven by the number of satellites and sats that you can also plot here. You can see that. I was having being uh, the GPS satellites that I was um, using were all the time between 10 and 11 except around this area which I think it was like 8 it went down to 8 this is uh, this will obviously give a, a lower precision so we can now of course uh, you can actually plot in the HDOP, the horizontal dilution uh, of position together but if variables are have different absolute values then you, you see uh, little detail so let's untick a number of sats and then if you still if you want to come back to the general and uh, to maximize the area of the, the plot the only thing you need to do is to click in the name of the variable here so now you see that is using as much as it can so you can see here that the the dilution of position hdop was between um, 1.6 and uh, 1.8 not so bad the recommendation is uh, to uh, for a good positioning in in, um, in most of the applications is it should be below two so in it was fine but here as i said i lost satellite satellite so i was using just eight around here so the HDOP went up to 2.8 this is essentially the the precision I will put a, a link also explaining a bit more on HDOP uh, from Wikipedia it's pretty interesting actually but uh, I can already now say that the main parameters that uh, give good positioning is not is the number of satellites of course but not only the number of satellites but the, the, the more far apart they are the better if you you can read the, the Wikipedia and understand a bit better why is that but um, yeah so in other words if you have 10 satellites but all are uh, from your point of view you see them more or less in the same uh, position in the sky then it will give a, a very very bad uh, HDOP very high number but on the other hand you might have a still you might have few less than 10 for example in this case but if they are very far apart the accuracy of the your position uh, estimation is much better so let's come back to the point of this video which was to show the maximum altitude and then use it uh, to check also in uh, Google Earth. So here you have these two variables. Altitude is the altitude that is estimated by the, by the GPS and relative altitude is the altitude uh, calculated from the accelerometer and uh, barometer data. By the way, the altitude from the GPS, this variable here, uh, is not used for uh, altitude estimation but uh, it's calculated anyway so here you can see what um, what uh, the different uh, from the sensors is the, um, the relative altitude which obviously starts at zero around zero which is the takeoff uh, because it's the reference uh, is uh, takeoff or home position and the uh, GPS is uh, above sea level so you can see that uh, is uh, it's not exactly the same data for, because it's not the accuracy of the GPS and it's also varying as you saw it, I was getting different HDOPs for example and also the barometer I mean I, it was quite windy so the barometer could have also had some fault readings but still it matches quite well and it is essentially I mean 30 meters apart so you can see here this peak is significantly different but uh, yeah there are it's pretty okay I mean as expected here uh, in this area here yeah i don't know what happened here but um, i was run out of battery um so and yeah, maybe i crashed something anyway 
So that's uh, the altitude that I can I got. So you can uh, I'm going now to remove the GPS data because there is another variable that is interesting to compare with. Which uh, so I'm going to remove the altitude from the GPS here. And then I'm going da up to the CTAN group, and then I uh, sorry that's current CTAN barometer altitude. So you can see here that they match quite well, both variables, here, I'm not sure what happened here, probably the accelerometer, um, which is, the green line includes here the, the, the accelerometer data, um, yeah, I think I had some kind of crash or something happened, anyway, let's check the maximum altitude I got, we can just zoom in here so you can see maybe I zoom in again in this area and you can see that the maximum altitude I got is around 22 21 22 meters from the takeoff position so now we can uh, go to an use uh, another file, KMZ file that is also generated and uh, related to this flight and open it in uh, Google Earth okay what I'm gonna do now is to, to uh, check from the same uh, log data not this not this uh, specific file but um, other uh, data that uh, related to this file and this uh, flight I'm going to open it in uh, Google Earth. So, you, I already created a shortcut in my uh, um, yeah, desktop so that I can access quickly the, the folder. And as you see here, these are essentially uh, below. You can see here the log files. Some of the that I will show, uh, I, you can see in the log browse uh, button in the mission planner. But there are many other files KMZ which are Google Earth files and GPX which I don't know what it is what are they yet so the interesting thing is that I'm gonna open the the file in Google Earth that corresponds to the log that I just showed previously so let's check again which file was so it was yesterday's flight at time 12:37. so we go to the folder yesterday's flights 1237 double click I install Google Earth okay so the file was um, open in Google Earth this is what you see KMZ uh, file name here and then you can see that you can check several things and what you see here is essentially where I was flying in three dimensions so you can see here the two um, times that I went up Think. there are several colors you can play a bit with it and go more in detail what are they and so on but what I'm gonna show you quickly now is that you can select and unselect things so for example I'm gonna deselect everything and I will just check the first flight actually as the lock the KMZ, um, KMZ um, file also saves the um, different flight uh, path um, which are um, defined by the change of uh, mode in the APM. So I was using a stabilize here. So this is a very small, very small uh, flight, short flight, I would say. And then let's see, this I was landing, but there nothing was shown here. This I was uh, coming back to stabilize and then I was doing all this. So 
So I was taking off here. Then I was, I remember actually, that a couple of times I was uh, rotating the quad. I was facing this direction here. Then I was flipping and flying in the opposite direction. Anyway, and this you can see here, one of these um, um, high altitude, let's say, <laughs> relatively high, altitude 20 meters high. Another one that might be interesting, this is, yeah, I was trying return to launch uh, mode actually. So what I did is to set the, the um, quadcopter in this position here, then I flew um, till here. Actually, you can see here, this is the loiter, you can see here in blue maybe. <laughs> anyway, it's difficult to see because of the colors. There is a loiter that I was doing before I activated the, the return to launch, which is this here, loiter. I'm gonna remove it, it's irrelevant now. So I was flying here and then I activated the, the return to launch. So I re there was a lot of wind, so it had a hard time to come back actually. <laughs> so I remember, and you can see in the videos, um, um, uh, when, if I pause them, that it was going high and then it was coming back to the over the home position here. But it was it was drifting a lot here so actually sorry for the video actually it went down and let's see if I can and it landed like 10 meters away from the home position here so it was a successful uh, test uh, about uh, the return to launch but um, yeah I'm not completely happy about the, the difference between the takeoff, uh, the home position and the, the landing, the final landing position. But we had a lot of wind and uh, yeah, so this I have to test it in a, a better day. But anyway, it worked. So these are some of the things you can do. Uh, this is something I found also interesting even though it's pretty messy. This is um, this is in a in a folder after the the path there is a folder called planes so you can see here all the planes this essentially tells you um, in any you can select the specific planes and know which roll and pitch angle um, you the quadcopter had the problem is that if you there are many planes so maybe for short flights might be interesting but uh, and useful to see but Let's see if I can see. It's pretty hard to see what's going on actually. Anyway, I have to see a better if it's I can get some interesting stuff from there. And then what else? Waypoints. I didn't have a program any mission, but you could also plot here in um, uh, if you had any. Uh, mission and you activated it you can see in Google Earth all the paths that the quadcopter did so okay I hope uh, this um, is useful for um, for you guys um, I'm going to um, figure out a, bit more, a few other things and if, if I think that might be useful to share um, I will post, the, post it uh, in YouTube thanks for watching